Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this lesson, we're going to continue on with our PlayFab tutorial series. In the last lesson, we showed you how to get and set player statistics from the client. And in that lesson, we talked about how it's not a very good practice to allow the client to set their own statistics because then they can submit any statistic they want. And so in this lesson, we're going to show you how to use server codes to allow the players to update their statistics. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. So to get started, I have my PlayFab dashboard opened, and I'm going to go to our PlayFab test project. I'm then going to select players, and here I'm going to select the user account that I was working with in the last video. I'm then going to click on statistics. And here you can see all of the statistics that I've added to this player. Now, important thing to note about player statistics is that once you've added an entry to a player, that entry becomes permanently associated to that player. You can't delete any of these entries. Now, you can change the values of each entry, but you cannot change the entries themselves. Another important thing to note about player statistics is that you can add new entries just by typing in a key and then clicking Save Player Statistic. But with that said, we didn't have to manually add any of these existing entries because when you set a statistic in the code of your project, PlayFab will automatically create an entry if it doesn't already exist. Now there's other forms of cloud saving that PlayFabs provides, which we'll talk about in the future, which allow you to delete entries that have expired. And so player statistics are really only for super important values that you know your game will always need. However, if an entry gets created that you're not planning on using in your game, it's not a super big problem because you can just leave that statistic alone. Now the last important thing that I'd like to mention with regards to player statistics is that anytime you add a new entry to your player statistics, there is also a new leaderboard created that is associated with that statistic. So if I go over to our leaderboards, you can see that we have all of these different leaderboards and each leaderboard is based on a statistic. But we'll talk more about this in the next video. For this lesson, we wanna talk more about using server code to update player statistics. And so the first thing that we want to do is disable the ability for clients to update their own statistics. And so I'm going to go down to settings, and I'm going to go to API features, and then I'm going to uncheck this allow clients to post player statistics, which we enabled in the last video. And then I'm going to scroll down and click save API features. Now, since we've disabled this option, we still need to have clients be able to update their statistics, but we have to do it via a server. Now there's a number of ways that we can go about implementing server code and PlayFab actually provides a hosting service which will allow you to create a server build of your project which has implemented all the server code that you want to include in your game and then you can upload that build to the PlayFab dashboard which will then host it for you. But this is mostly for if you're using the multiplayer features provided by PlayFab. And as well, their server 2.0 feature is only available for paid accounts. But luckily, they also provide a more basic hosting service, which is available for free accounts. And this is under the Automation tab. And it's called Cloud Scripts. In Cloud Scripts, you're able to add server code, which will then be hosted for you. And you can then access this server code via your clients. Now the thing about Cloud Scripts is that it's all written in JavaScript. And so if you want to, you can upload your own JavaScript files, but PlayFab provides a lot of different example functions for us. And we can change these example functions to do what we want them to do. And so right here, you can see that we have this JavaScript function, which is called make API call. And inside this function, we can see that it is updating the player statistics. And so what we can do is we can customize this function to update the statistics that we need for our game. And so over on my other monitor, I have a list of all the statistics that we've already implemented into our game. And I'm just going to pick a few of them 
and add them into this function. And so here I've implemented just three of our stats. I have player level, player high score, and apples. And I'm currently setting all of the values to zero. And so maybe we can make this into a reset player stats function. And I would just then want to rename this function. But I think we want to allow our players to send values, which we'll then use to update our statistics. And to do this, we're going to use our args parameter. And so here I'm using our args parameter and I'm accessing the different values that which we will be sending to this script. Now, if you look at this function, although it's written in JavaScript, it's actually very similar to any of our other API calls that we've been making in previous videos. Here we are setting up our request, and then here we are sending our request. And the request that we're sending is a update player statistics request. But you'll also notice that rather than calling our client API, we're just calling our server API. So now we have this function created, but I'm actually going to rename it to something like update player stats. And now what we can do is we can scroll up to the top of our script and we're going to click save revision 10. Now if we use this drop down menu we can see all of the different versions of our cloud script. Now yours will probably say revision 2 instead of revision 10. I created some other revisions and then ended up removing them. But what we want to do is we want to select our new revision and we're going to click deploy revision and then it should say live next to revision 10. So now that we have all of the code that we need for our server side we're going to go over to our unity project. Once we've opened our unity project I'm then going to open our playfab controller script. Inside the script we're going to be creating some new functions and to get these functions I'm going to go over to this documentation here which is on writing custom cloud scripts. And I'll include a link to this documentation in the description below. But we've already implemented our cloud script function. And so I'm going to scroll down a little bit further. And right here, they have an example for a Unity client side script for accessing their hello world function. And so I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to go back to our script. I'm going to paste it in at the bottom of our player stats region. And now we're receiving some errors because we don't have these callback functions. And so I'm going to go back to the documentation and I'm going to scroll down a little bit further. And here we can see our different callback functions. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to paste them in down here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is rename our start cloud hello world function. I'm going to rename it to start cloud update player stats. Inside this function, we are sending another request, and this request is a execute cloud script request. And these are the values that we're passing through our request. The first one is the function name that we want to call. And we don't want to call hello world. Instead, we want to call update player stats. So I'm going to copy this, go back to our script, and I'm going to paste it in here. Now that we're calling our update player stats function in our cloud script, it's time to set up some parameters or arguments. And so I'm going to remove the example parameter that's in there. And we're going to go back to our cloud script. In our cloud script, we can see that we have our first argument, which is called player level. So I'm going to copy that and go back to our script. And I'm going to paste it in here. But this is going to pose a problem because that's the name of our variable. And so maybe I just change it to level and in our cloud script. But since I changed it here, I'm also going to have to change it up here. So I'm going to save revision and then I'm going to deploy. We can then set this equal to our player level variable. 
but this is going to throw an error because for some reason this function is static. So I'm going to remove that. We can then do the same thing for our two other arguments. Now I don't have a variable for our apple stat, so I'm just going to set it equal to zero. Now I'm going to leave the rest of this function alone, except for I'm going to make this function public, and that way we can pair it to our button. Then I'm going to go down to our on cloud hello world function, and if I wanted to, I could rename this to something like on cloud update stat. But if I rename it here, then I also have to rename it where we call it in this function. Now this callback function is looking for a message from our cloud script. It then debugs that message to the console. Now currently we're not returning any message from our cloud script. And so if we want to return a message, we could type return, then curly brace, and inside this we're going to type message value, colon, and then we could put a string. So there we go, we have a message that we're now returning. So I'm gonna scroll up to the top, I'm gonna to click Save Revision, and then going to click Deploy Revision. Now we can go back to our script. Now that should be everything that we need for the script, so I'm gonna save it, and then we're going to go over to Unity. Once back in Unity, we're going to expand our Canvas game object. I'm then going to select our Update Stats button, then going to scroll down in the inspector to our on click event. I'm going to use the drop down menu to go to PlayFab controller and I'm going to select start cloud update player stats. Now we can play our game and test it out. So here you can see that it successfully logged me into my PlayFab account. I'm then going to select our PlayFab controller game object and in the inspector we can see that we have values already set for our stat variables. So now what we can do is we can change the values of these variables. I'm going to just set them all to zero, and then let's click Update Stats. Here you can see that we received our message from the cloud script, which says Updated Cloud Stats. And if I double click on this message, it'll take us to our on cloud update stats callback function. So we know that we are receiving something back from our cloud script. Now I'm going to go back to our dashboard. I'm going to select players. I'm then going to select my PlayFab account. And then I'm going to go to statistics. And here we have our Apple, our player high score, and our level stats have been reset to zero. But our game level, our player damage, and our player health keep the same values. And that's because we are only sending these three parameters. So although we're changing the value of the variables on our client, those values aren't being sent to the cloud script, and so they're not being updated. Now let's go back to Unity, and we'll test it one more time. Now I'm just going to change our player level. I'm going to set it to 100. I'm going to change our player high score and set it to something like 5,000. And I don't have an Apple variable, and so that one's just going to remain at zero. Now I'm going to click Update Stats, and you can see that we received a second message. Now I'm going to go back to our dashboard, and I'm going to refresh this page. And now you can see that we have our player high score is set to 5,000, and our player level is set to 100. So it looks like everything's working, and that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And also subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.